Poker Tour. The biggest games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. The WPT is a series of international high-stakes poker tournaments that can turn amateur players into millionaires and make professionals into superstars. With millions of dollars on the line, it's time for these six players to live the dream of fame, fortune, and the one thing money can't buy, a WPT title. Tonight on the World Poker Tour. From the Mirage in Las Vegas, the WPT is set to kick off our best season yet, and it starts right now. So shuffle up and deal. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Sexton alongside Vince Van Patten, and welcome to the Mirage Poker Showdown, the kickoff event of Season 6 here on the WPT. That's right, Mike, and the final table is about to begin here from Las Vegas. This is a potential great one. I mean, this could just jumpstart the new season. We started out four days ago with 309 players, all putting up $10,000 each. They're all going after that first place prize of $1.1 million. And Vince, our chip leader tonight is a guy who's making his seventh WPT final table appearance. He's also considered by many to be the greatest poker player alive today, Phil Ivey. He is fun to watch, but it's not going to be easy. He's up against four very tough professional players and one tricky amateur. We are at the Mirage in the the Las Vegas desert. So just put your camels to bed. Let's go watch them gamble. And Vince, what a way to kick off the new season on the World Poker Tour. One of the true superstars in the game, Phil Ivey, our chip leader at this final table. Cards are in the air. Action is going to be on the online star, Daryl Dickin, making his second appearance at a WPT final table. He likes to fold. I'm not Philippi. Out. Round to Richard Kirst, the lone amateur at the table in seat one. He's going to go out as well. And on the button is 22-year-old Jonathan Little looking down at a 10-deuce. He'll fold that junk. Now we're down to the two blinds, Vince. The two chip leaders. Action's on Corey Carroll. Out of the small blind. He's going to raise it up right here. Makes it 57,000 to go with a king four. Doesn't he realize who's on his left? The great Phil Ivey. You don't steal his blinds. He's got an ace five this time. Phil Ivey is a defender. He's, He's gonna... made the call. He has the best hand. Let's see what happens. And remember, these guys are the two chip leaders at the table, clashing on hand one. Comes a flop. It's come Jack six three rainbow. No help to either player. Action's gonna be on the Canadian. Will he have the guts to bet when his hand didn't hit? Oh yes, he does. It looks like eighty thousand. He's making the continuation bet, Vance. Phil Ivey likes to fight for every pot, but he's going to give this one up. So right there, the 24-year-old not intimidated by the legendary Phil Ivey. Led right out and took the pot oh, down. Oh, man, he confiscated the pot from <laughs> Phil Ivey just like that. Well, Corey's been playing poker for about five years. And Vince, he became a professional poker player because he didn't want to get a 9-to-5 job. That's why he's worked so hard on his game. Well, yeah, you can't let those jobs get in the way of your poker. <laughs> And Vince, we joke about does he know who's sitting on his left. Believe me, every one of these guys at this table not only know Phil Ivey, but they know he's a man on a mission to take this title tonight. They're going to try to prevent him from doing so. Well, you know something? Just like in any other sport, if you don't think you can beat someone, you won't. So just because Phil is there, can't be intimidated. Otherwise, you've got no chance. All right, action's going to be on the New Yorker. Amnon Philippi. He looks down at an ace-queen. Pretty good hand. Very notorious hand on the World Poker Tour. And Amnon looks like he's getting chips out. Well, it's a good starting hand. He's under the gun, as we say, meaning he's first to act. And he is going to raise it. Comes in for 70,000. Richard Kirsch folding. Jonathan Little looking down at a 9 8. Won't play that. Corey Carroll on the button. He looks down at a 7 of hearts. Call. He just won the last pot. Feeling good. He's going to make the call here with this hand. And right behind him, Phil with an ace jack in the small blind. And yes, he's going to call as well. Action around on Daryl Dickin now. He's got that ugly seven deuce. It is suited, though. His nickname is Gigabet because he plays so much online poker. Daryl calculating the size of the pot, which is over a quarter of a million dollars. No, he elects to fold. And just didn't want to put in another 46,000 with seven deuce. So we've got three-handed action here. The two chip leaders and the short stack. Here comes a flop. Oh, it's come King Jack 10 with two hearts. Hamnon has flopped the nuts. The ace high straight. Corey has a four flush right there. Phil Ivey with a pair of jacks has checked it. 
Now it's on Amnon, who is short stacked at this point. What will he bet? If he might try to check to trap somebody, but no, he's leading right out. Bets 135,000 with the nuts. Into the Canadian. He's considering this with a huge four flush. Next, he's got the nut flush draw and a straight draw. Hard to believe he'll get away from this hand. Question is, does he want to just call this bet? Or does he want to come over the top, try to run Amnon out of here? He's got a lot more chips than Amnon does. Looks back at his cards. Can it be true? Raise. Corey says raise. Music to Amnon's ears, I can tell you that. And look at Amnon trying to pretend like he doesn't really care. 220 more. He's going to raise it 220,000 more. Phil Ivey quickly I'm going on. out. And of course, Amnon says all in with his nuts straight. I call. And quickly called by Corey. So just that quick, we've got an all in situation here. Amnon with the best hand possible right now, the ace high straight. Corey looking for a heart to win this pot. I love the joint. <laughs> he looks around at his fans. Yep. He says, we got him right now, boys. He's got the entourage of rail birds behind him, rooting him on. Can the nuts hold up? Two more cards to sweat. It's a nice flop. His nickname is Guts. Right now he's got the nuts. Let's see if it holds up. Let's take a look at the turn. So far, so good for Amnon. Six of diamonds, not going to help for the flush. Corey needs a heart to win this pot. A queen would give him a split. He look nervous. Yeah. <laughs> in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> look at the sweat. It's so sick. Second time on the World Poker Tour <laughs> final table. Amnon Philippi. Got to sweat one more card. He's laughing it up right now. So we are one no, card no, away yes. from Amnon <laughs> taking down a huge pot here. And you heard it won't be small He's got to dodge a heart on the river. Fifth Street coming up the river. Oh, my God. oh the deuce of hearts oh. comes off. Unbelievable bad luck for Amnon there. He started his final table on the short stack, but still, oh. Vince, the guy flopped the nuts uh, and got him cracked. That's awful. He's got to feel like he just took a dagger in the heart, Vince. Well, the New York City professional, very classy, walks away. He's going to be out in sixth place. Uh, what about Corey Carroll? He bluffed Phil Ivey on hand one. He drew out on hand two. Vince, the guy's got to be thinking, hey, this is going to be my night tonight. You're watching the best poker on television right here on the World Poker Tour. I'm going to win this event. I feel as though it's old to me. I mean, this is my seventh time on WPT, and I've never won. I'm going to do my best to win it. I think I got a good chance to win. This is the one I want to win. I want to win it just as bad as that. I almost deserved to win. I'm feeling good, man. I think I'm going to win it. So I've been a little bit cursed, but I've never been a chip leader going into the final table. And this is the first time, so uh, I think I'm going to do well. Canadians are good at poker, but there is definitely a strong Canadian influence in these tournaments. He's done it! The legal age in Canada for playing poker is 19 where I'm from, but other provinces you can play when you're 18. Most of the Americans don't get to start till they're 21, so you see good young Canadian players coming up because they're more rounded, they've been playing live longer. We just have the jump. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown in Las Vegas. I'm Vince Van Patten with Mike Sexton, and just like that, Amnon Philippi out with Ace Queen. That is the lollipop hand because it looks sweet, but it always gets licked. <laughs> It's a tough pill to swallow when you're knocked out, of course, but wasn't due to bad play, only due to bad luck. All right, down to five. Right now, Corey Carroll with about two million. Phil Ivey with 1.3, and he's on him. He's got a king-queen this time, and he's going to move it up to 70,000 to go. Daryl Dickon going out. The lone amateur at the table, Richard Kirsch, out as well. You know, Jonathan Little with a 10-7, won't play that. Only one to beat is Corey who's in the big blind here. He's got the clean six of clubs. Everything's gone his way so far tonight, Vince. He has vaulted to the chip lead at this final table. Why not tackle the great Phil Ivey? He's going for the hat trick. Three in a row. Can he do it? Here's the flop. And flop is 8-7-3. No help to either player. Corey quickly checks it, giving the green light to Phil. Now Phil's going to make the continuation bet of 100,000. And that's what he's going to do. It's going to lift the pot here with just King High. So there you have it. Phil Ivey taking down his first pot. Obviously, two-time WPT champion Eric Langren, who's come tonight to watch Phil Ivey. 
who's making his seventh WPT final table appearance, has yet to win on the World Polar Tour, and that bothers him, Vince. I'm very close to Phil. When people pat him on the back for tying the all-time record for making WPT final tables like they were doing today, he was saying, well, to me, all it means is six times I got there, I was a loser. The best poker player in the world is probably Phil Ivey. Phil Ivey, one of the best players in the world. I haven't played with him enough to say that Phil Ivey is the best poker player in the world, but when most of the poker world is saying something, I'm not going to disagree. Some people consider me to be the best player in the world, but I wouldn't put too much stock into that because poker is a game of momentum, and I haven't really been playing that much lately. It's hard to be on top of your game. Just like golf, you have to be playing all the time. My nickname, I don't really care for that too much. Phil Ivey's got to feel like the Tiger Woods of poker. I told Mike Sexton about that, and he put it into that because it's a little ridiculous. Golf and poker have similarities, but but what Tiger has done in golf uh, never be done in poker. You can't dominate poker tournaments. I mean, you could do well and the same people who come to the top, but you just can't win one after the next. What's it like being Phil Ivey? I really love to gamble. I love playing golf. I love playing poker. And um, I'm able to do all three of those things. And so it's like living a dream. So there you see Phil explaining a little bit how tough it is to dominate in poker. You just can't do it because of the luck factor that's involved in the game. Well, you're right, Mike. I mean, this is a game that neutralizes talent in the short run. But in the long run, I'll take the best players. For example, Phil Ivey is tied with Daniel Negrano for making seven WPT final tables. That's the highest of anybody. That only averages a little over one a season. All right, let's go back down to the table. The amateur Richard Kirsch quickly folding. And now Jonathan Little, who we've seen before on the World Poker Tour. He's going to pump it up with ace five, off suit to 70,000. Over to Corey Carroll on the button. He and Phil go out. And now the big blind, Daryl Dickin, with a suited connector, six, seven of spades. Speculative hand, he's considering this. Well, he's got 24,000 out there, costing 46,000 more to call. Online pro, he made a lot of money online, he says. Playing with real people here tonight is going to make the call. So two-way action between the two former WPT finalists, both of whom finished fifth the last time we saw him play. Flop is jack, three deuce with two spades. Daryl's got a four flush right there. It's on him to act first. And he, Jonathan with an inside straight draw. Now Daryl has checked it. Now the question is, will Jonathan take the free card off to draw at this hand, or is he going to fire at this pot? He's going to bet, Vince. He leads right out and bets 120000 Yeah, he's going to make it tough there for Daryl Dickens, the online star. Does he want to be a star in this hand and yeah. compete? Part of your problem is, in case your opponent has two spades in his hand, he's going to have a bigger flush draw than you. If Jonathan would have an overpair in this situation, if you would raise him, you might have to gamble for all your chips in this pot. Daryl Dickens says he's played about six million hands online. That's a lot of hands, Vince. <laughs> I'd love to get a piece of his rake. Whoa. He's coming over the top here. There you go. He's making it 360,000 to go. And right now, Jonathan Little saying to himself, ease. Why didn't I take the free card off? I might have spiked the four here to get this guy. And he is going to lay it down. So just like that, the online star, Daryl Dickin, gets the green light. Name up in green. I've played live with him before, and I can tell you this kid is a tough player. In the audience, we see Daryl's brother David there cheering him on. And by the way, he wrote that Mike Sexton is his favorite poker player. I'll tell you, he was at the same table at the Tournament of Champions in the World Series. I happened to win that tournament. He made it to the final table. And maybe he's just saying that so I'll say nice things about him, Vince. It's going to work, Daryl. You did the right thing, son. <laughs> Five players left, fighting it out for over a million-dollar first-place prize and this coveted WPT title. And out in front is Corey Carroll from Canada with $1.9 million. Daryl Dickin is coming to second place with 1.3. Well, action's going to be on, Daryl. So the 9-6 offsuit. Going to lay it down. Now the amateur player, Richard Kirsch, folding a 5-4. Hasn't played a hand yet. Jonathan Little with the button with a queen jack. And he's going to raise it. Makes it 70000 to go. Corey out, and now Phil Ivey is going to call with a 9-10 offsuit. He's in the big blind, so why not? Phil Ivey is a defender, wants to see a flop with the 10-9. Here comes that flop. 
Queen Jack, huh. three with two clubs. Phyllis flopped the open in straight draw. But Little with two pair, the top two pair on the flop. Phil's checking. What a beautiful flop by Jonathan Little. Checked into you. And he's going to stick $120,000 out there for Phil. How much is that? 120. Let's see what he's going to do. He's flopped the open in straight draw. Vince, he better be very careful here because if he gets a little reckless. This kid's not throwing down the top two pair here, but Phil makes the call. Well, if he gets a little lucky, this could be happy days are here again here for him. Oh, you're right about that. Here's the turn card. Can Phil get lucky? No, not there. Well, the deuce of clubs comes off, putting a potential flush out there. It's not what you want to see when you're drawing to a straight. Phil checks. Into Jonathan. Now Jonathan's saying to himself, does this guy, was he for flushing? Does he have a flush now? Jonathan's not crazy about the club either, but he's going to bet the top two pair. Bets 200000 Going to find out where he is. That club coming off of there might save Phil some money here, Vince. You hate to draw to a straight when there's a possible flush on the board. I'll see how much it is. You don't have to count that down. Let me see how much uh, Don't get crazy on us here, Phil. I mean, Phil certainly understands the power of the re-raise. The question is, will he figure out the power of Jonathan's hand here? Now look at Jonathan. Gotta love those mirrored glasses too, huh? That's something out of a bad 70s cop movie. Even if Phil catches, of course, he could be drawing dead. And that's what Phil's thinking. Wait, do I want to make a tremendous draw only to be already beaten? Vance, the longer Phil takes to make a decision here, the more surefire it is that Jonathan's going to make a call in case Phil gets crazy and comes over the top of him here. Well, that's part of his problem is two of his outs, the king of clubs and eight of clubs, would put four clubs on the board. So not only would he want to check a straight if he made it with four clubs out there, he wouldn't want to call a bet either. Be a smooth lay down if he could do it right now and get away from this mess. And he does lay it down. Nice. So after long deliberation, Phil Ivey makes the right decision there. So Jonathan Little is going to take down this pot. And the table impresses me about him, Vance, is in the Grim Poker Adventure where he finished in fifth place. But he was very cocky there, said, I'm the best player, I'm going to win. He was humbled. He's toned it down. He says, you know, there's a lot of guys out here that can play poker. I'm just going to try to get better and do the best I can. Jonathan Little, little big man, taking down the pot against a giant in the game, Phil Ivey. One of these players will be crowned the first WPT champion of season six and will take away $1.1 million. Don't go away. In season five of the World Poker Tour at the Caribbean Poker Adventure, I didn't really play as well as I wanted to. I thought I was the best player at the table, but that was wrong. Wow! Well, tough luck for Jonathan Little there. Best poker player at this table is definitely Phil Ivey. Second best player at the table, probably Daryl Dickin. I'll probably win this tournament about 20% of the time. I hope this is my 20%. The kickoff property for season six is at the Mirage, of course. When the World Poker Tour comes to the Mirage, it brings in the best poker players in the world, and it creates so much excitement with the local media, with the staff throughout the property, and it's just the talk of the town. Welcome back to season six on the World Poker Tour. You're watching the Mirage Poker Showdown continue. Five players remain. And right now, the chip leader from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Corey Carroll, sitting on about 2.2 million in chips. In second place, Daryl Dickin. And in third place, the legendary Phil Ivey, was just over a million. And accidents going right down there to Daryl Dickin, the online poker star. He's got a 6-4 of clubs. He's going to make a move here. Yes, 75,000 to go. Round to the amateur, Richard Kirsch. Got a king eight. He'll fold it. Jonathan Little going out as well. Corey looking down at a 6-3 offsuit. Will not compete. And Phil Ivey with the Jack 7 of clubs again defend his big blind. He's done that every pot so far. And you can push around most of the table, but not Phil. Yeah. Made the call. Here comes the flop. Well, Phil flopped the gut shot straight draw as it comes 9-8-3. Well, he's checked it. He's got an inside straight draw. Nothing materializing there for Daryl Dickin. Now, Vince, you're right. He has absolutely nothing. He's got a 6-4 in his hand. Will he pull the trigger and make the continuation bet here? What a good poker face this young guy has. And if he does, will he win the pot with it? 
and he is betting at this pot one hundred thousand dollars. Nicely done, into Phil. He's got the inside straight draw. That's about it. Will he shake loose here? Well, Vince, he's down to less than a million dollars in chips. Cost him $100,000 to make this call. So a pretty big portion of his stack to draw to this gut shot straight. Yeah. Played a lot of hands tonight. Nothing is hit, but he's going to call yeah. here, trying to hit here. This shows you the kind of feel he's got for the game. Probably figures if you catch a jack or seven, you have the best hand as well. Well, the king of spade comes off. Now that car is not going to appeal to either player. Neither one of them have a spade in her hand, and obviously the king didn't pair him. Action's on Phil. Is he going to try a move here? Well, he's checked. Well, the question is, will Daryl make another move and fire a third shell at this spot? A very risky move at this point, but Daryl, considering that. Oh. Well, Vince, he knows he can't win this pot checking it down. So if you're going to go after it, you got to bet either here or on the river. Oh, boy. He is doing it. He's betting right here, 150000 The bully continues with nothing, and, and it's going to work. Phil Ivey does lay down his hand. So Daryl Dickin outplaying Phil Ivey in that hand. Bold, aggressive play before the flop, on the flop, and on the turn. Outplaying Phil Ivey in that hand. He was in position. Check usually means weakness. He just kept going, showed a lot of heart and guts. Takes down that puck. I've played as much poker as most people three times my age. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many hands I've played online, but it's it's somewhere in the neighborhood of six million, maybe. My internet screen name is Gigabet. Daryl's got to say, wow, it's nice to make it to these WPT final tables, but the last time he was looking up at Doyle Brunson, Phil Locke, Patrick Antonius, and the most successful woman in the history of the tour, J.J. Lou. Tonight, he turns around and sees Phil Ivey sitting on his right. You play the best when you make the WPT final tables, that's for sure. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's what Daryl says. <laughs> it's going to be on the amateur player from Pompano Beach, Florida, Richard Kirsch. He's going to fold an eight-deuce. Jonathan Little going out. And now Corey Carroll with the button and an ace seven. And he's on the button. He's in position. He's got the chip lead. So he's going to raise it. Yes, he is. Makes it 75,000 to go. Phil Ivey quickly folding. Oh, Daryl Dickin looking down at a queen jack. He is on a nice roll here. He's on a rush. It's going to cost him another 51,000 to speculate. And he's going to put them in. Yes, he's called. So he's made the call. Let's see what comes up. Well, it's come queen, four, three, a great flop for Daryl. He's flopped top pair, and he's going to check. Yep, trying to trap here a little bit into the Canadian, who's saying, hey, if you're checking, I'm going to go with a continuation. Well, as Amarillo Slim likes to say, when they're checking, I'm a betting. <laughs> well, he has bet 125000 back into Mr. Online. What do you do with your queens now? Do you just make the call here? Or do you go ahead and raise it right now? Well, if you raise, you're probably going to chase this guy away. If you just call and an ace comes off, you shoot yourself yeah. later for not re-raising him. He's just going to smooth call. That'll turn the caution light on for Corey there. Ooh. Another queen comes off. Daryl has made three queens. He is loving that card. I bet you'd think if he didn't raise it on the flop, he'd go ahead and check here to try to get another bet in out of his opponent. That's exactly what he's done. Pray the other guy fires. But no, Corey, the Canadian, is going to slow down. He's checked it as well. Very wisely. Here we go to the river. Well, six of hearts comes off now. Does put a potential flush and potential straight out there, but... I'm certain Daryl's got to feel like his three queens are the best hand. Oh, yeah. And you don't want to check and have the guy check behind you, so you want to get some value. Well, Daryl is reaching for chips, it looks like. And he's going to bet. Looks like 140000 mm -hmm. If you're sitting in Corey's seat, you're saying to yourself, hey, what can I beat here? This guy called a bet on the flop. Even if he was drawn to a straight, the worst he would have made is two sixes. Well, he's a high school dropout, but he figured that one out. He quickly folds. Well, we started out with 309 players. We are down to five. And the very stick-thin, hungry-looking Daryl Dickin getting a nice streak going. Want to get better at the game we love? Then sharpen your poker skills at worldpokertour.com.
Before I became a professional poker player, I didn't have too much going for me. I dropped out of high school, had a, about a year period where just a big bum, and then started playing cards, and well, now things are starting to happen, and it's definitely good to be young and have a, a chance to make good money. We are back in Las Vegas at the Mirage Poker Showdown. Five players remain. Close to $1.1 million is going to go to the winner here tonight. We've had a turn in the tide since we started this final table. Phil Ivey, the superstar of poker, started this final table with the chip lead. And right now, with five players left, he is in last place in chip count. Well, he is getting chopped away like a piece of balsa wood. Not pretty right now. Action on Jonathan Little. He's down to Queen Deuce. Corey going out. And now Phil Ivey with a jack ten of hearts. Well, he's on the button. He's going to raise with it. Makes it 70000 to go. Got the suited connector hand. Will this be his hand, but next to compete is Daryl, his old nemesis, and he's got a king-queen offsuit. He knows Phil Ivey could be raising with any two cards on the button. Daryl Dickin, who's been on a little roll lately. He's in the small blind. Well, it's going to cost him an additional 46000 Vance, wow. he's coming over the top. Yes, he's re-raising it right here. And Richard going out. Where is it? It's 240000 to go. He says, you may be Phil Ivey, but I'm Gigabit. Take this. 240000 Oh, that has got to hurt. Well, Vance, it hurts for a couple reasons. A, it shows you these guys aren't afraid to play with Phil. But B, Gigabit understands that Phil Ivey is short-stacked at this table. And if he made a marginal raise there, will he want to call another $170,000 re-raise with the amount of chips that he has? Well, Phil has been playing these kind of fairly decent hands all night because he's so talented. But nothing has hit for him, and he's gotten whittled down. And now with just Jack-10, does he want to invest an additional $170,000? Well, Vance, he's only got about seven seventy dollars left. It's the kind of hand you know he's dying to see a flop with. No, he lays it down. So chalk one up to Gigabet there for coming over the top of the great Phil Ivey. Re-raising with the king-queen to take down that pot and shut Phil out of seeing a flop. Well, just good thinking by Daryl Dickin, who's saying to himself, look, everybody folded around. He's on the button. He's probably not that strong. I'll find out exactly where I am with my king-queen, and it works perfectly. Well, Vince, all these players have shown... They're not afraid to play with Phil Ivey, and they're not afraid to outplay him either. They're gaining confidence, and Phil is losing his. Let's go back down to the table. Going to be on Corey. He's got an ace-6 offsuit. Won't play that. And now Phil Ivey with a queen-10. He's going to put more chips in again. He may have lost the last few pots, Vince, but he does not slow down. He raises again, makes it 70,000 to go. All right, fold it around to Jonathan. Around to the 22-year-old who looks down at a pair of threes in the big blind. Not how much you have left? He's yeah. the picking on the superstar here. Well, Jonathan's got him covered. 650 more. But the question is, what do you do with two threes here? Well, they are smelling blood at this point, and that's Phil's. He is coming over the top. Forget about Colin. He is re-raised, makes it 300,000 to go. And again, Phil has to abandon his hand. Welcome to Phil Ivey's worst nightmare. Well, Vince, credit these guys. You know, they're not just calling there and letting Phil out play him after the flop. They're taking it to him. They're coming over the top of him after he raises pre-flop. You talk about hitting a man when he's down. We are witnessing a complete mob mentality. <laughs> just they're throwing bricks at him, pillaging Phil Ivey. The Andes are going up to 5,000. Blinds are going to be 20 and 40. Action's on Daryl Dickin, who looks down at a jack eight of clubs this time. In first position on quite a rush here tonight. Oh, oh, Vince, he's creating his <laughs> rush, I can tell you that. Raising with hands like this. Well, he's made it 120,000. Richard out, Jonathan out. Corey not going to play, but the victim once again, Phil Ivey's going to stick around with his queen jack. Well, Vince, we can see Phil has the best hand. He certainly wants to see the flop of the queen jack. He makes the call. Well, he's overdue for a little luck, but no, he doesn't get it here. Well, this flop is no good for Phil Ivey. He just has the queen high. He checks it. And now Darrell with the open-ended straight draw here. Will he fire with the open-ended straight draw, or will he take the free one off? He raised pre-flop. Oh, boy. And the monster's getting chips out. The 
They're not through with Phil yet. And yes, he's going to put $200,000. And Phil just jettisons his hand into the muck. So Phil Ivey still frustrated. He's just not catching any cards, not hitting any flop fence. You can see his emotions on his sleeve right now. When you don't catch cards, it gets frustrating. You're just saying to yourself, why can't I just hit one flop? Why can't I pick up one big hand of aces or kings? But some nights it just doesn't happen. Right now, the Sharks are smelling the chum. They're eating him alive here. Well, Vance, that may be the first time Phil Ivey's ever been called chum at a poker table. Wow. Are you watching the same game I'm watching? <laughs> Action is going to be right back on Daryl Dickin, his old nemesis. Looks down at a 9-7 of diamonds. Well, everybody's been his nemesis so far tonight, Vance. Let's see if it'll turn around. Daryl going out. Yep, and now Richard from Pompano Beach. He's also been totally card dead at this final table. Folds his hand again. Right. Jonathan Little with the button. He's got an ace, eight of diamonds, and he's going to put chips out for a raise. Yeah, makes it 120,000 to go. Corey quickly going out, and Phil calling with a queen deuce here, man. How much you have left? Not much. He's only got about 500,000 left, puts 80,000 more in there with the queen deuce of clubs, and he flops a flush draw. But unfortunately for him, Jonathan has flopped trips with top kicker. Check. Phil has checked. Jonathan behind him is going to try to trap with his three eighths. He's checked. Going to give Phil a free card. Okay. Oh, Phil's going to love that. He caught his flush. Well, he's finally made a hand here, Vance. He is overdue. He's happy to make some, so he's going to make a bet. 150,000. Come all in. And look at this. Jonathan's come over the top all in, and Phil quickly calls it. Well, right now, Phil a nice favorite to win this pot and double up. He'll be back about to where he started this final table if he can win this pot. Can something finally go right for Phil Ivey? He has to sweat out the last card. Well, he's got to dodge an ace, a jack, a three, or an eight. We'll see who didn't want to play his hand or not real soon. As the cards <laughs> lie, Phil about a three-to-one favorite to win this pot and stay alive. Can he do it? Oh, no. Oh. An ace comes off. Jonathan has made a full house, eights full of aces, and that's going to knock Phil Ivey out of this tournament. He finally made a hand. He got his money in with the best of it. Unfortunately for him, Jonathan outgrew him. Run good. What a sick turn. Yeah, really. Horrible luck once again on the final table for Phil Ivey. He's just always too soon. He's so great to watch. But seven times here at the World Poker Tour final table, you thought his luck would turn around. Not to be. Phil Ivey out in fifth place, going to pick up $129,000, and he's going up to talk to Layla. Thanks, guys. I'm with Phil right now. Phil, this was your seventh time at the final table. You were everyone's favorite. Everyone was rooting for you. What happened out there? Well, um, nothing I did work today. I mean, um, right off the bat, I lost the first couple hands I played. I tried to steal a couple of pots. I got re-raised. Just my timing was off. I felt like I was going to win, like I always do. Right. And, um, you know, that's just the way poker is. Um, every time you put a chip in a pot at the final table, it's, it's real important that you win that hand. And I just couldn't get it done today. But how are you feeling? What's going through your head right now? I'm feeling all right. I'm headed to Hawaii tomorrow, so, so I'll, not... I'll be okay. That's it. It's over, Phil. Get Phil's out. We're done. That's the end. Well, I'm going with him on that golf trip, Vince. But right now, he's probably wondering, gee, should I defend my blind on every occasion like I did? I didn't hit one flop. Shake it off, Phil. I know you'll come back. We are down to four players. Stay tuned. For more information on the World Poker Tour, log on right now to gsn.com slash WPT. The last WPT final table, I came in fifth. When my name was called to step out on stage, I was a little nervous. This time I feel very comfortable. The cameras aren't bothering me at all. I guess I've gotten a little bit used to it. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown from Las Vegas. Four players remain. And Corey Carroll is our chip leader. A young Canadian with about $2.2 million. Well, that's the big story so far. Phil Ivey came into this final table as chip leader. He is out in fifth place, and these players are giddy that Phil is gone. $1.1 million up for grabs right now. Back the table, Daryl quickly folding. And now Richard Kirsch with the button. He's got a big hand. Ace 10, he's going to put the short stack in there. Well, that's in fairness to Richard. This is the best hand he's seen all night long, and he's put his chips out there. Come on, Len. Jonathan Little with ace jack. Wow. He says, I'm all I in. I'm going to wake up with something Two here. Two aces, Corey? Nah, not quite. And just like that, they're going to flip yeah. up the cards. What a play by Jonathan here. Richard Curse, the amateur, saying, wow, I waited all night here. I finally picked up a hand that looked good to me. I got my money in. The guy's got me dominated. 
Ace Jack versus Ace 10. Here comes the flop. It's come King Nine Deuce with two clubs. That is no help for Richard. He's going to have to catch a 10. Two running cards to make a straight to win the pot. If the board paired twice, he would get a split pot out of this. But right now, Richard Kirsch, the amateur in dire straits, Vince, to stay alive. He took it back. Three of diamonds on the turn, not helping Richard Kirsch. Well, he's been playing poker for 10 years, Vance, but right now, 10 is the magic number. That is what he's looking for to pop up there. Yep. If not, he might catch that plane to Hawaii with Phil Ivey. We are down to the river. He's looking for a 10. And it's a nine of hearts. He's not going to get it. He's going to be out. And Vince, in fairness to him, like Phil Ivey, he was card dead all night long. And I don't care who you are or how great you play, if you don't catch cards, it's hard to win. Well, he's going to pick up $172,000. Bragging rights to say that he outlasted the great Phil Ivey at the table. And we are down to three players. Three internet guys. How does that work? Go figure. But what about that call by Jonathan Little making a call with Ace Jack? Well, as you can see from the percentages of the chips in play, it's a virtual three-way tie. Yeah, the chip count percentage graphic sort of cool. Shows you where everybody stands. And with the blinds at 30,000 and 60,000, it's really anyone's game to win. Let's go back down to the table. Jonathan has folded. Corey has called with Jack Four. Daryl Dickon in the big blind looks down at Ace Queen. Very strong in a three-handed poker game, and yes, he's going to bump it up, make it 140,000 to go. Well, those pink chips are 25,000 each. You see, he said four more of them in there. So he's popping it up 100K right here. Into Corey, young guy from Nova Scotia. Well, he's going to gamble with the Jack Four Clubs, Vince. So here we go. Nearly 300,000 in the pot already. Here comes the flop. Oh, it's come King, Jack, 10. Corey's flopped second pair, but Daryl Dickon has flopped the best hand possible right now, and ace high straight. Absolute cinch, and now Corey has quickly checked. Now Daryl will try to trap. No, he's going to bet $200,000 with his cinch at this point. Well, he's not slow playing it whatsoever. And now Corey Carroll with second pair. Well, he's thinking in his mind this guy's going to bet no matter what. He's going to make the call. Potential disaster here for the Canadian. Coming to the turn. Oh, oh. and a jack <laughs> comes off. Corey has now made three jacks and checks. Daryl Dickin right behind him checking as well. Wow, I'm a little surprised that Daryl would check that. He still has the ace high straight in the best hand. Now the deuce of spade comes off. Back on Corey, who must think he's out in front at this point. Well, certainly he feels like he's out in front after his opponent checked on the turn. Daryl Dickens slowing down, giving a lot of respect on the turn. Thinking this guy might have stumbled into a full. We know better. 320. A quick bet of 320,000 and just a quick call by Daryl Dickens. Well, Corey proudly turns up the three jacks, yes, thinking he's got the best hand. Unfortunately for him, he does not. Daryl turns up the ace high straight. He's going to win this pot. There you see Daryl's brother David jumping up and clapping for that play. I'll tell you something, Corey got off very cheap there, in my opinion. Well, Vance, I would agree with you. How Daryl Dickens could check that hand on the turn. You just can't put your opponent on two pair on the flop because for sure you think the guy is going to raise you back with two pair if you bet on the flop like Daryl did there. Over a million dollar pot. But still, Vance, you just wonder, could that pot have been even bigger? Well, a little conservative by Daryl Dickin, but he is the chip leader right now. Three players remain. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Jonathan Little is a player that I've known for a long time. Jonathan Little I've played with online quite a few times. He knows how to mix it up, and he's a tricky player. Corey Carroll, I'm not really sure what to expect from him today. Corey Carroll and I have been playing on a regular basis for the last year and a half, so he knows my style of play. I think Daryl Dickin is probably going to give me the most trouble. Daryl Dickin is a great tournament player. He's going to be tough to play against. Oh, winning $1.1 million sure would be nice. Being 24, playing for $1.1 million, I kind of expected it to happen earlier. I don't really think a whole lot of being 22 and playing for $1.1 million. It's, I kind of expect it of myself. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown, where three players battle here in Las Vegas for close to $1.1 million. Well, when this final table started, we had three guys in their 20s and three guys in their 30s. All the 30-something-year-olds are gone. It's come down to youth. 
one more time somebody in their 20s is going to take down a WPT title and over a million bucks. Jonathan Little, he's out in front, only been playing poker for two and a half years. It's time with the button and a jack eight of hearts. Three-handed poker game, you got to open it up. And he's going to open up with an $80,000 raise into the Canadian, Corey, who looks down at an ace-five. And he's in the small blind, meaning he's got 20000 out there, so it's going to cost him another 100000 to make this call. Race. Ooh. He is raising, Vance. Forget about calling with the ace-five offsuit. He's coming over the top with it. 220000 That's 340 to go. Daryl Dickin going out. This over-the-top re-raise has been the most effective play at this final table, that's for sure. Back on Jonathan Little. Well, his little hand of Jack 8 just got smaller. Can't see what you have left. Oh, boy. Well, it's 220000 more to call this re-raise. He just has a Jack 8. Now, he has Corey covered, of course. I'm all in. What wow. the heck? Jonathan Little has gone all in over the top with a jack eight. Just complete poppycock. <laughs> Corey looks down at his chips. He's got about $1.2 million left. Even though we can see he's got the best hand right now, how do you call a $1.2 million re-raise with an ace-five offsuit here? Very tricky, very difficult. What instincts by Jonathan here. To put his man on not that strong of a hand. A win, lose, or draw. You've got to admire the aggressiveness of both of these players on this hand. The, or the insanity. Corey came back over the top and raised it 220000 with an ace-five offsuit. And now little Jonathan <laughs> has moved over the top all in. He set him in, Vance, with a jack-eight. The little train that could. Vance Corey has not mucked his hand yet. I don't believe you for some reason. What kind of poker savvy is that? His gut is exactly right. But you still want to pay off it, even though you think you're being robbed. Well, this is either going to be really good or really horrible. I call. He's made the call. Wow, what a call. I didn't know that. Unbelievable. Corey Carroll has made this call. He was suspicious of the overbet, Vance. He's thinking, would the guy really raise me $1.2 million if he had that big a hand? It didn't pass the smell test to Corey. He how made the tough play? call. What's that? I said, how good do you play? You talk about gambling here at the Mirage. That's what they're doing right now. Great, great feel right there by Corey. Oh. He stands up quite proud. Wow. His instinct's absolutely correct. Will it pay off for him? That's a good call. Thank you. We'll see if it pays out. Let's see if the ace eye stands up now. But there's five cards to come. Anything can happen. Here come the first three. Oh, yes. wow. Flop comes ace five five. It is over. That to me. Corey Carroll has flopped the full house. Vince, it's like he was rewarded for making that call. What a flop for the man that made the call of the night by far. Now, it's not over yet. But for Jonathan to win this pot, it must come either jack-jack or eight-eight. And here comes the t just counting out his chips to pay off Corey for making that incredible call. If you're sitting in Jonathan's seat, you got to be thinking, if this guy can read me like that, I could be in trouble. We are watching a whole different poker game here. Corey makes the call of the evening. Three players remain. He's a massive chip leader. And we're coming right back for more on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the final table of the Mirage Poker Showdown. I'm Layla, and here's how the race to become a poker millionaire has gone so far. As the night began in Vegas, all eyes were on superstar Phil Ivey. But if you blinked, you missed the exit of East Coast pro Amnon Philippi. Oh! As the river ran him back home in a New York minute. And then, after a night where three young pros determined it was not his time to shine, Phil Ivey was once again destined to leave the WPT felt without a win. The lone amateur was the next to fall, and now just three remain in the hunt for the first WPT title of season six. All talented, young, and hungry to start their seasons with a $1.1 million win. 
And now back to two guys who are always money in the bank, Vince and Mike. Three players remain, and the antes and blinds are going up. $10,000 antes, and the blinds will be thirty and 60000 And our new chip leader is the Canadian, Corey Carroll. He's sitting on three million chips, and he has earned them by making a very tough call just a moment ago with an ace five. Back to the table, Jonathan Little quickly folding, and now the no-job kid, Corey Carroll from Canada, who just refuses to get a nine to five. He says he has a king ten, and he's going to raise. Makes it 180,000 to go. Into the online star, Daryl Dickin. He's got a queen eight of spades. Daryl Dickon is calm, cool, and collected as any player you will ever see. 120 more. He is going to make the call here. So two-way action between the two chip leaders. Flop comes ace, 7-3 with two spades. Daryl has flopped a flush draw. Nothing hitting there for Corey, but he's getting pinks out there. Nevertheless, well, he's he going to chuck him in. He raised pre-flop, so he's going to go ahead and make the continuation bet of 205000 here. And the question is, what is Daryl now going to do with this flush draw? I think his poker instincts are uncanny. I've played with him before. I'm telling you, this guy plays terrific poker. Well, do you just call with the flush draw, or do you go ahead and come over the top? And it looks like Daryl's getting out extra chips here to come over the top of Corey Carroll. And there he goes again with a re-raise. Yep. He's made it over 600,000 to go now. And Corey is just posturing right now because there's no way he's going to call over a $400,000 re-raise here with just King High. It's the guy that just called with Ace-5 for all his money. Well, Corey does lay the hand down. Chuck one up to the online. He is running good. His instinct's absolutely correct. Not afraid to gamble. Are you gonna... His timing just seems oh, yeah. perfect. He makes move without hands. He seemingly knows when to come over the top of a guy. This is his second WPT final table. As with Jonathan Little, Corey Carroll also on a good run. Just won a half million dollars playing tournament poker himself. So he's on a roll. Jonathan Little quickly folding. And now the Canadian, Corey Carroll. Well, going to try something different here. Going to limp in in the small blind with the 8-5 of hearts. And Daryl Dickens says, give us a flop then. 10-7. And flop comes ace to reduce with two hearts. Corey Carroll with the flush draw and straight draw checks it. Yeah, and right behind him, Daryl checking as well. Here comes the turn, and there hits a flush there for Corey, but he's going to check again. Daryl Dickens going to make a bet. Well, Daryl bet 75000 here. He's drawing completely dead. He's trying to represent a hand that Corey actually has, a flush. And Corey's looking back to make sure he has that flush, man. No, I love this acting job. That's a bit of a tell, though, isn't it? Just casually calls well, with does, his flush. Does not raise with the flush here. Well, he wants to pretend like he only has one heart. Oh, and that's oh. going to hurt his action there. Well, Corey is not liking that. Because if his opponent had one heart in his hand right now, he would have a flush. Corey checks on the turn. Nine of hearts at the river, putting four hearts out there. Now, unfortunately for Daryl, the only way he has a chance to win this pot is to bet at it. Remember, he's just got the 10-7 offsuit. Doesn't have a heart. It would be scary to bet right now. Got to figure his opponent can beat that for sure. So he's going to take a stab at this pot. He's going to have to bluff at it. Well, sometimes you just give it up at this point. You would think maybe this is one of those times. But no, Daryl Dickon bravely bets. This hand did not work out how I wanted. I call. 200,000, and the Canadian's complaining, but he's going to make the right call. I guess it did work out how I wanted. Indeed, the pot's going the right direction, Corey, so don't feel so bad. But as you said, he wasn't liking that nine of hearts whatsoever. Daryl Dickon is showing a smile, saying, hey, I'm finally caught here. Folks, these may be young guys, but I can tell you, they got plenty of game. Don't go anywhere. This is the first time my parents have ever watched me play poker. I really don't like anyone watching because it adds extra pressure that I think is unnecessary. But they've been very supportive of me, and hopefully I can impress them.
So Jonathan saying he wants to play well tonight to impress his parents. They are in the house watching him play, and you know they got to be proud of their 22-year-old son tonight. He does want to impress him, but he also wants to take home the close to $1.1 million. That would be very impressive to bring back to the family. It's going to be on Daryl Dickin, the online poker star. And he's got an ace-deuce this time. He's getting chips out, but not to raise, just to call. And he's going to limp in on the button with the acey Ducey. Into Jonathan Little with a jack-10 offsuit. Well, he wants to see a flop for a half a bet, so he makes the call. And now the Canadian also with a jack-10. Not going to move it up. So we've got a family pot, three-way action, and two players. Jonathan Corey have the exact same hand, a jack-10. And they both flop top pair. It's come jack, five, deuce. Daryl, on the other hand, is flop bottom pair. And they all check around the horn. Here comes the turn. Well, the four hearts comes off. Gives an inside straight draw for Daryl Dickin. Action on Jonathan to act first. He's got the top pair of jacks. He's going to put them in. Looks like 125,000. And to Corey Carroll, he has the exact same hand. Two jacks with a 10 kicker. What's he going to do? 24-year-old moved to Vegas a few months ago to see how he could do. Oh, look Chris. at this. He's going to get aggressive with it, says Rays. Well, Vance, he believes the two jacks are the best hand right now, so he's going to make them pay to draw. Daryl gets out of the way. How much more is it? Jonathan Little says, how much more you got? Yeah, these guys are young. I'm all in. And he says, all in. <laughs> how much more? Jonathan Little has gone all in here. And that's about a half a million dollars more. Well, Vince, these two guys going at it one more time. Going back into their spitting contest. Well, certainly Corey can afford to make this call. 490. But would he want to make a call here for another half million dollars with just a lonely pair of jacks? He's taking the bets. After your opponent let out, you raise, and now he's re-raised all in here. Well, he's trying to figure out exactly how much more it's going to cost him. The odds of this endeavor, calibrating it all in his head to make the right decision. This would be a heck of a call to split the pot. Well, Vance, poker is a people game. The last time in this scenario, Corey made a terrific call for all his money with an ace-five offsuit. Here, essentially, he's got to be thinking to himself, you know, what can I beat here? Essentially, but a bluff. That's not going to re-raise me with just a pair of fives or a pair of fours, would he really do it with just two jacks? So I think Corey believes he's either got a real monstrous hand or perhaps nothing. And he's made the call, Vance, for the second consecutive time. He's made a terrific call against Jonathan Little. He looks disgusted that his hand's not the best hand. They both look a little disgusted, actually. Well, Vince, you can understand Jonathan being disgusted. He's probably saying to himself, geez, every time I move all in, this guy calls me. So this is going to be a split pot. Doesn't matter what comes on the river. But Vince, how do you make that call with just a pair of jacks and a 10 kicker? This Corey, it's like he can read him like an open book here. I'm glad you didn't have a draw. I'm glad you didn't have a draw. <laughs> It's like a battle of wits. I mean, they're just matching each other stride for stride. Great bets, great raises, great calls all around. Well, as we move on, action's going to be on the button. Corey Carroll, he lays down a 5-4 offsuit. And now Daryl Dickin with a 7-5 in the small blind. He's going to limp in and make the call with the 7-5 here. And Jonathan Little with an unimpressive 10-8. He says give us a flop here. All right, they're changing gears. Not quite as aggressive right now. Here's our flop. It's come 8-6-6. Six, six. Daryl Dickin has flopped the open-in straight draw. Jonathan's flopped top pair. Action's on Daryl. He's going to bet the open-in straight draw. He bets 80000 And Jonathan says, I call. Okay, will Daryl hit his card right now? Going to the turn. Well, Daryl has now made a pair of sevens. Always. And an open-in straight draw. I call. He says, all in a quick call by John, who's on the short stack. Daryl set all in because he knows his opponent's only got about 500,000 in chips. The all in bet sounds more impressive, but out of that two and a half million he put in there, he's only got to cover the amount Jonathan has. Jonathan out front right now with the eights and sixes. His opponent 
has two sevens with an open end straight draw, but notice a nine, even though he'll make a straight, will not help him because Jonathan will have a larger straight. Daryl right now must catch a seven or a four. It's the only way he can win this pot. What do I need to dodge? Well, this could be the demise of Jonathan Little if things don't work out on the river. Here it comes. It's a king, so Jonathan Little is doubled up here. The short stack lives on. And Vince, this could turn the tide dramatically here. Nice, that is right, the young 22-year-old from Pensacola, Florida, doubling up, back so in action. Who is going to get to the Oasis first here at the Mirage? Three players remain. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. Keep up to date with World Poker Tour broadcasts on gsn.com slash WPT. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. This is the kickoff event of Season 6, and what a great night of poker we're seeing Three young guys battling out for over a $1.1 million first place prize. That's right. We started out with 309 players here in Las Vegas, all putting up $10,000 each. Who will be crowned our WPT champion? Let's go down to the table. Got to be on Jonathan Little, the 22-year-old who's only been playing poker for a couple of years. He's got a big hand, ace jack, off suit yeah, with he, the button. Well, Vince, he just doubled up the last pot, so he's feeling good right now. So he's going to go ahead and raise it here. Makes it 175,000 to go. Right behind him, Corey looks down at a decent hand himself. He's got King Queen. He's in the small blind, meaning he's got 30,000 out there. How much you have left? Cost him another 145 to make the call. The no job kid. This is his fourth WPT event and his first cash out. What's he going to do here with the King Queen? Decent starting hand in the three handed poker game. And he's thinking maybe John's just trying to take this pot because he's in position. How strong do I want to play this? Iris. He's going to re-raise. 550 total. He is coming over the top here with a king-queen. Daryl Dickens quickly folding, and now it's back on Mr. Little. It's another 375 to Jonathan. Well, these two guys have clashed in some humongous pots so far. Want some watch? Just like a push? Is that what you're doing? Corey has read him perfectly almost every occasion so far. Jonathan suspecting a little larceny here. It's amazing how well these guys read each other. All right, I'm all in. Oh, he says all in. He's going to gamble wow. with his ace jack. Yes, I'm committed. I call. Corey says, I'm pot committed. I got to call you. Not crazy about it, but what can I do? Well, nobody seems to be folding against these two. So here we go. Jonathan Little all in for the second consecutive pot. He won the last one against Daryl. He must win this one against Corey to stay alive. Right now, he's out front, about a 3-2 to two favorite. But if things should work out for the Canadian, that would be it for Jonathan Little, and we would be down to heads-up play for that million. He'd love to knock this Jonathan Little out of this event. Can he do it? Here's the flop. Well, flop is 10-8-5 with two clubs. That's no help to either player. So right now, Jonathan Little still well out front with the ace-jack. Two more cards to come. Here comes 4th Street. It's another five. Well, we are down to the river card. Uh -oh. And for Corey Carroll to win this pot, he's going to have to catch a king or a queen on the river. Otherwise, Jonathan Little will double up for the second consecutive hand. And he spiked the long shot and knock out Mr. Little. Well, it's a deuce of clubs. So Corey sits back down. Jonathan Little has doubled up again. And Vince, he threw a left cross over there a minute ago to Daryl Dickon, doubled up through him, and now he throws a right powerhouse to knock Corey Carroll down. That's right, and take home a close to $3 million pot. Jonathan Little looking good once again. And right now, Layla is standing by with Jonathan's roommate, poker pro Shannon Shore. What's it like watching your roommate play out there for $1.1 million? That's no joke. Uh, no, it's not. It's really exciting to watch. He's such a great player. He's been absolutely killing the circuit uh, the last four months or so. And uh, he just doubled up. There's no reason he can't win this thing right now. I'd be lying if I said I don't think he's one of the ten best tournament poker players in the world. He, he knows what to do in every spot, and he's just fun to watch. Well, I think he's even probably more fun to watch if you have a piece of him. Nothing like rooming with a winner. A million dollar winner. <laughs> He is our chip leader. He's got close to $2.8 million. He's back in a big way. And now Corey is taking the short stack for the first time in a long time. Well, action's going to be on, Corey. He looks down at a monster hand. Two kings. Oh, a dream come true. Second best hand in poker before the flop. Stay calm, Corey. 160. And he's going to move it up to a very inviting 160,000 to go. But right behind him, Daryl Dickon with an ace three of hearts. Also pretty good. 
What he's wondering is, is the steam factor coming into play here. Remember, Corey just lost the last pot when he doubled up Jonathan. So could he be making a steam raise? Daryl's going to find out. He's made the call here yes. with 160,000. Jonathan Little folding. So we got a big hand pair of kings up against ace three here. Nice pot developer. Here comes the flop. Oh, oh, what a monster flop for Daryl Dickon. He's flopped two aces with a straight draw and checks. The king's just fizzling right there, and Corey smartly checks behind him. Wow, what a check by Corey. Loves makes <laughs> Daryl two pair now, aces and threes. Corey's sickened that an ace appeared on that flop. Well, action's on Daryl. He's going to lead out in bed here, Vince. 200,000. Oh, wow. And Corey throws the two kings away without hesitation. And so confident. He shows the hand. Well, I'm amazed how well he can read both of these yeah. guys, Vince. His calls and his laydowns have been spot on here. Vince, you know when you raise a pot with two kings and somebody calls you, invariably it seems like the ace is the first card out there. Frustration sets in. Corey just opted to get away from most kings as soon as the ace hit the board. Corey is really dialed in right now. He is in the zone. I think any player that plays professionally and plays the tour wants to be a WPT champion. And certainly, the money is great. It's big. Every week, over a million dollars out here on the World Poker Tour. But the truth of the matter is, is the prestige of winning a WPT title. Wow! Daniel Negreanu, he has done it. Our champion, Michael the Grinder, Ms. Rocky. That's something that's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. Money comes and goes. But everywhere you go, you're going to be known as a WPT champion. We are back at the Mirage Poker Showdown in Las Vegas. Three players remain, going after close to $1.1 million. And Vance, we are seesawing the chip lead back and forth here. Just a moment ago, the short stack, Jonathan Little, is now the chip leader. And the chip leader from before, Corey Carroll, is now the short stack. A decision on Jonathan. Six of clubs in the small blind. He's going to limp in and make the call. Now Daryl with an 8-7 says, let's see the flop. Nothing fancy. I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to pray. Here comes the flop. It's come king 10-8. Corey's going to check. He's got shot straight draw. Well, Daryl Dickin caught a piece of that, but he's checked it. They both check. Oh, look, the gut <laughs> shot straight has come in for Corey. He has made a 10 high straight here. That makes two pair for Daryl Dickin. Wow. Big trouble lurking here. Well, we could see some fireworks, no doubt about it. Corey's betting 80,000. Well, he leads right out and bets the straight. Oh, yeah. I see. Daryl, who now has made two pair, has to think he's got the best hand done the events after both players check the flop. so. 240. Now he's going to raise it, moving it up to 240,000 to go. Well, Corey has got to be loving this, Vince. Yes, there's one hand in the deck that can beat him a nine jack, but if he's got that hand, he's just got it. You're never getting away from a 10 high straight here. The question is now, do you push it now, get the chips in, say, I, I don't want this guy out drawing me? Marlin. Hey, call. He has gone all in. Well, he's quickly called by Daryl. Well, Daryl's got the bottom two pair. He's going to have to make a full house to win this pot. Corey bounces up like a jack in the box here. And he slaps the cards down. He looks back over at the boys, nods his head. Says, I got him, guys. I got him. I got him here. Daryl Dickon must catch an eight or a seven to win this pot. Otherwise, Corey Carroll is going to get back all the chips he just blew a moment ago to Jonathan. We are down to the last card. Here comes the river card. Well, it's a nine. So Corey Strait is going to stand up. He has doubled up. And Gigabit took a serious blow there, Vince. Nice hand. That's it. Thank you. It's an ugly turn card. Pardon me? So that's an ugly turn card. Yeah, well, it happens. <laughs> so that time, Daryl Dickin taking the big blow to the head. He's now doubled up both opponents here. He's been very generous as of late with his chips. You couldn't tell from his poker face, though. Still very poised. Jonathan Little has folded his hand. Corey is called out of the small blind with King Jack of Diamonds. Kojak, as we call it. Doesn't raise with the hand. And Daryl Dickin with a 5-3 of diamonds. Not going to raise. Content to see a flop. Here we go. Look at this. Corey with top pair of kings. But Daryl Dickon has an open in and straight draw. Well, action's on Corey. Well, he is going to lead out and bet the two kings, it looks like, Vince. Well, in. I call. Well, he's going to bet 100,000, and Daryl quickly goes all in. And without hesitation, Corey calls him with the two kings. 
He has the best hand. He's up on his feet again, arms crossed, just hoping the Kings stand up. Great instinct by the Canadian, quickly calling the all-in bet. And just like that, Daryl Dickin caught picking. Well, Vince, I like the all-in bet by Daryl Dickin here. Hard to assume your opponent's got a king in his hand when he didn't raise pre-flop. Daryl has the open-in straight draw. He's looking for an ace or a six. But the nine of diamonds comes on the turn. We are down to the river, and Daryl Dickin must catch an ace or a six. He must make a straight to stay alive in this tournament. Well, it would be back to online poker for the online star. It is all coming down to the river. Here it is. Well, it's a seven of clubs. And that's going to do it for Daryl Dickin. Well, early on, it seemed like Daryl had all the momentum, and he was on track to win this thing. He's won some big bucks. Get a three-course meal on me, Daryl. You deserve it. Terrific player. Just couldn't quite get it done tonight. We get a lot of poker fans for this effort here tonight. And he is going up to talk to Leela. Who are you rooting for? Who do you think is going to win? Well, I don't know. They're, I think they're both... Uh... They're both about equal. They have about the same amount of chips. Some be PC. You gotta give us the inside scoop. You can't be giving me all this PC stuff. Oh, if I had to root for somebody, yes. I guess it would be Corey. It's a good game. All right, so you're rooting for Corey. We'll find out when we come back right here on the World Poker Tour. Are you good enough to play at next year's Mirage Poker Showdown? Log on to worldpokertour.com and see if you've got what it takes. custom on the World Poker Tour. We get down to heads up play. We have our money presentation. The ladies in red bringing out the green. This is the dream of every poker player. To see the girls come out here with the trophy and the money. This is beautiful. That's a lot of money. It's a lot. These two young guns are going to fight it out for the lion's share of that money. Big time cash. Lots of flash. But bigger than that, one of these players is going to become a star on the World Poker Tour. Who's it going to be? It's come down to 22-year-old Jonathan Little and 24-year-old Canadian Corey Carroll. He's starting out with a slight chip lead. He's got a little less than 3.2 million. Jonathan Little sitting on about 3 million. All right, the cards are being dealt. Action's going to be on Jonathan Little. And this time, Jonathan peeks down at a pretty awful 10-3. But that's not going to slow him down because he's going to move it up. He's going to raise, going to make it 300,000 to go. Now, Corey has a jack seven. Three total. Without hesitation, Corey's going to make the call. So they are rambling and gambling, at least so far in this heads-up battle. Well, it's not about cards anymore. They're just playing the man. Here's the flop king, jack five. Corey has flopped second pair and checks. Yes, he does. Going to try to set up Jonathan Little here a little bit. Of course, he looks like he's going to make a continuation bet with his nothing hand. 400000 This is where you face your toughest decisions in No Limit Hold'em. When you flop second pair and your opponent's firing out at you, what do you do now? If you call and you're wrong, this guy really has a king. It could be the tournament because this is getting expensive, but he is right well, he's making the call here, Vance. Mm -hmm. To the discomfort of Jonathan Little. Going to the turn. Well, the jack of diamonds comes off. Corey now has three jacks. He checks them. But Jonathan Little has made a flush draw with the jack of diamonds coming off. And does he want to push here with the four flush? No, he slows down. Wants mm -hmm. to get the free card. He sure does. It's not a diamond. It's a nine of clubs. Didn't get his flush. Actually, back on Corey. Well, Corey's got three jacks. 550. Got to feel like they're the best hand right now. He's going to bet 550,000. Into Jonathan, who has just 10 high. But I'll so, tell you one thing. If he would have pushed on 4th Street, this could be over because obviously it's going to be called down by Corey with the three jacks. Well, it could be over if he pushes on 5th Street. He hasn't folded this hand yet. Well, he could try to buy it and make a massive mistake here. Well, he can't call, Vince. He's either going to come over the top He's going to throw his hand away. And he does opt to make the right decision in throwing his hand away. So Corey Carroll is going to take down that pot and increase his chip lead. And I am impressed by the instincts of a guy like Jonathan Little, who plays fast all night long. And all of a sudden, when you expect him to play fast with a four flush, he feels something, he slows down, and he saves his stack. He's like an animal that sensed danger there, and he opted to get out of danger. Jonathan Little's parents in the house here tonight. His dad, Larry, his mom, Rita. 
cheering their son on. But right now, the chip lead belongs to the Canadian, Corey Carroll. Action's on him. He's got a king five. 300. And he's going to make it $300,000 into Jonathan, who has got a king three. I'm all in. Wow. Vinci has gone over the top all in here with a king three offsuit. Talk about just playing the man. It's a psychological battle of saying, I don't think you're strong, so I'm going to pretend like I'm strong. Go away. Well, that's the key to No Limit Hold'em. It's a people game, and it doesn't matter what your cards are. If you sense a little weakness in your opponent, just come over the top of him and take the pot away from him. This would be an amazing call, but no, he's got to lay down the king five, which is actually out in front, so nicely done by Jonathan Little. Well, you certainly can't blame Corey for laying that down. You just have to give Jonathan credit for making that play. If you go back about 10 hands, Corey did make an amazing call with just the ace five. That turned things around for him. But this time, gets away, lays down his king five. Sometimes you just got to go on to the next hand. Well, Vance, we are witnessing a pretty good testosterone battle here. No doubt about that. Jonathan Little, action right back on him with the button. Well, this time he looks at the suited connectors. He's got the 10-9 of clubs. And he's going to take it upstairs. He's going to make it 300,000 to go. He's getting the heavy pinks out. And Corey with a queen 10. Again, Corey has him dominated, as we say, in terms of the cards. But you certainly don't know that when you're sitting there. Corey does make the call, though. So here comes a flop. Well, it's come jack, 7-4. Corey checks. Jonathan has the gut shot straight draw. But he's not going to fool around. He's checking as well. A six of spades on the turn. Helping either player. Now, Vince, once your opponent checks on the flop, you just assume that they haven't hit any of it. So even though Corey has nothing right now except a queen high, he is reaching for chips. Pinks are worth $25,000 each. He's getting a handful. Wow. Sticking them out there. The message he got a moment ago was that Jonathan hit nothing on the flop, and he's going to try to win this pot right here. Well, it's a $375,000 bet. Complete zip and pip, and he's going to make Jonathan go bye-bye. Well, Jonathan can't put that much money in to draw to the gut shot straight, so he does lay it down. Well, you think about how young these guys are, 22, 24, just a few years back, they're in high school in P.E. doing jumping jacks, and now they're playing for millions of dollars. But look at the composure of these young guys, playing for life-changing money, and they're calm, cool, and collected. And let's not forget the winner of this not only gets $1.1 million, but he also gets that guaranteed seat at Bellagio at our WPT Championships at the end of the season. Action on Corey with a queen jack just calling. Well, a little surprise. Corey wouldn't raise on the button with that hand. but well, Trying to be deceptive here. Not going to pump it up. And Jonathan Little with a queen three behind him. And he says, give us a flop. Now flop comes ace, queen, ten, all hearts. Potential royal flush on the board now. Corey's got a royal flush draw because he has the jack of hearts. Both players have two queens. Well, Jonathan has checked his pair of queens, and Corey coming out with a casual 150,000. Well, Vince, there's no way that Jonathan's going to put him on an ace in this situation because he didn't raise before the flop. He wouldn't put him on big cards because he didn't raise, so it looks like he might be making a move. But, of course, he did have big cards. He had Queen Jack, but he decided to play him tricky, and it might pay off for him. Well, it sure will, because Jonathan's making the call here with second pair. King wow. of Diamonds comes off. Nice for Corey, hitting the straight. Jonathan checks. And just a beautiful hand now for Corey. And he's got a straight and a royal flush draw. Vince, it looks like he's going to come out and bet. 250. Quarter of a million, 250 is the number. Vince, all Jonathan has is a pair of queens in this situation. He's got to let it go. Well, and he does. He's got to the Canadian. Vince, two years ago, Gavin Smith, another Canadian, won this tournament. He went on to become WPT Player of the Year. Obviously, the whole world knows about Daniel Negrano, the most successful player in the history of the World Poker Tour. Corey Carroll trying to make his stamp in his own Canadian section of Halifax. This town ain't big enough for the both of them. Heads up action continues when we come back on the WPT. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown, where two players remain in heads-up action. Well, what a way to kick off Season 6 on the World Poker Tour. 
a 22-year-old and a 24-year-old fighting it out for over a million-dollar first-place prize. And right now, Corey Carroll is getting the best of this heads-up matchup. Action on Jonathan Little. Jonathan's going to stay aggressive. He raises it with a Jack Six offsuit. She makes does. it a quarter of a million to go. Corey Carroll from Nova Scotia with a Queen Nine. He's going to stick around. Well, he makes the call. These guys not afraid to play. Both staying aggressive. Here comes a flop. Well, flop comes nine, eight, seven with two spades. Corey has flopped top pair here. He checks. Jonathan has flopped an open in straight draw. Getting chips ready. And they're going in. That's a $400,000 bet. Well, that's a hefty bet there. See if Corey can figure this out. Potential straight. Possible flush draw out there. A little two-handed action. Well, you check top pair with a big kicker for a reason. You're trying to check raise. Now, don't get cold feet now. Well, you trapped your man. I'm all in. And there he goes over the top all wow. in. Like he should. I think he calculated this hand just exactly right. That his opponent had some kind of straight draw. Didn't want him to draw at it. So just go ahead and move all in with the top pair. That's what Corey's done. So if he's going to pay. There you see mom looking on to Jonathan. He's saying, oh, son, be careful here. Be careful. He's gone all in. Oh, he's going to lay it down. Well, it's hard to put in another $1.8 million on a draw on hand there, especially your case 1.8. Jonathan opting to lay it down. And Corey Carroll extending his chip lead. And so far, Vince, everything going the way of Corey Carroll in this heads-up battle. Somewhere, Jonathan's got to do something to stem the tide. That's going to be on Corey Carroll. This time he's got ace eight. 300. Going to move it up to 300,000 to go. Jonathan Little's got a pair of fives wired. Come on, then. He says all in with it. Wow. I like this play, Vince. He's going to put the pressure on Corey Carroll to make another tough decision. Every time he's put Corey to the test so far, Corey's passed with flying colors. Well, it's close to $1.6 million more, and right now the Canadian grimacing over this decision. Well, Vince, it's a very tough decision for him. If Jonathan turned his two cards face up, of course, Corey would beat him in the pot because he's getting the price to do so. There's 2.2 million in the pot. It's going to cost him 1.6 million to make the call. He's only a slight underdog to win this pot in a race situation. The other factor is if he'd get lucky and win this race, this tournament would be history. The trophy and the cash would be heading back to Canada. I call. And he's made the call. Wow, he's made the call. Now it's all come down to Lady Luck. We're always saying to win no limit holding tournaments, you gotta win races. You gotta take the two over cards and beat the under pair, or you gotta have the under pair beat the two over cards. If Jonathan's hand holds up, he'll be the new chip leader. That is right. And the Canadian up on his feet. He could taste victory right now. 10, 10, 7. Not good for him so far. Well, at least it gives him another out to win the pot. If a 7 comes off, Corey will take the lead with two pair with an ace kicker. So he can now win the pot with an ace, an 8, or a 7. He can backdoor straight. He can backdoor flush. A lot of ways for Corey to win this pot. Here comes 4th Street, the turn. Well, a king comes off, so for Corey Carroll to win this pot, he needs to catch an ace, a king, an eight, or a seven. Any of those four cards and the title and the trophy will be going back to Canada. Otherwise, Jonathan Little is going to double up and take the chip lead. Here the card comes up at the 10. Corey put his fist up. Oh, yeah. How much? Nice hand. But the board paired the wrong card, Vance. He needed to pair the king of the seven. It did not. Jonathan made a full house. The very cool, calm and collected Jonathan Little, adding it all up, telling him how much he's owed. One point five. Well, what we've seen so far in this heads-up battle is Corey winning pot after pot, but bam, in one deal, Jonathan doubles up and takes the chip lead. Welcome back to the Mirage Poker Showdown in Las Vegas. Heads-up action, going after big bucks.
Whoever wins this heads-up battle will become the 72nd Poker Made Millionaire on the World Poker Tour. Right now, Jonathan Little out front, but Vince, it's been a battle. Well, Andy's going up to 20,000 blinds, 80 and 160. Action on the Canadian. Corey Carroll, he looks down at an ace nine. Well, that's a pretty good hand and a heads up battle, no doubt about that. And he makes it 480 to go. Come on, but right behind him, Jonathan Little says all in with his ace six of spades. Well, he's been quickly yeah. called by Corey, yes, so he here has. we go. Both these guys know that if you have an ace in your hand, when you're playing heads up, there's a 90% chance your opponent does not have an ace in his. They both opted to go with the ace high right now. Corey out front with the ace nine. I don't feel good about this hand for some reason. Well, Mike, he's got Jonathan dominated, but it's weird. It's like he's jinxed himself. He's got a bad feeling about this hand. Well, Vince, I don't know why. He's got all his money in. He's got ace nine. His opponent's got ace six. He can't do much better than that. If Jonathan Little outdraws him here, we'll have our champion. Here comes a flop. Oh, what a flop. It's got Queen Jack 8 with two spades. Jonathan Little has swapped the nut flush draw. Corey still has the best hand with the ace nine. Well, Vince, Corey's bad feeling about this hand was spot on. Jonathan's gone from being a dog to becoming a mathematical favorite because he's got so many outs. Unbelievable. All Jonathan Little needs is one measly more spade to hit the board. He'll take home this title. Well, here comes the turn card. Well, the board pairs eight. Well, you see Corey's disgust there because he knows that they're now playing the same hand. Both players are playing a pair of eights with an ace, queen, jack. Let's see a big 10 on the river. For Corey to win the pot, he's got to catch a nine or a 10. That's not a spade. Jonathan will win the pot if any spade comes off or a six comes off. The title on the line. Coming down to this card. To do some diamonds. Oh, no. So this is going to be a split pot. And look at both these guys, Vince. For the second time tonight at this final table, they've split a monster pot. And neither one of them seem too happy about it. Deflation at the table. Chop pot. Go back to work, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look at Coy. A little down on himself. I mean, look what's happened to him. He was ahead, he lost. <laughs> yeah. He was ahead again, and he chopped the pot. I mean, man, that's got to get in your mind after a while. All right, well, the card's once again being dealt. Crowd just buzzing about. And actually, right back on Jonathan Little with the button. He's got a 7-4. He doesn't want to compete. Throws it down. Well, for the first time at this final table in the heads-up battle, he mucks on the button there, just catching his breath from that last pot. Corey had an ace high there, ace-6. So he takes that pot, and wow, you talk about having the whole tournament within your grasp. Jonathan Little, all he needed to do was see a spade. It was his. Well, Vance. Gotta go through adversity. Jonathan been pretty lucky the last couple hands. He won the race with the two fives for the big pot. That time he had the worst hand when the money went in. Ace six against ace nine, and he got the chop out of it. All right, next hand action on Corey. He's got an ace seven this time. 480. Makes it 480 to go. Small in. I call. Jonathan Little has ace deuce. He's gone all thing. in. And a quick call right. by Corey. Wow. For the second consecutive time, feel better about, no, all the money's gone in the call. pot for Corey Carroll. And he's got the best hand once again. He's got the ace seven. His opponent's got the ace deuce. Once again, Jonathan's got spades to draw to. The Little's up on their feet. Very excited. You know what Corey's thinking right now? Let my hand hold up just one time here in this heads up battle. He just got off the hook the last hand. Let my hand hold up once. Jonathan Little, still very poised, not even getting up from his seat. Second time within a year to make a World Poker Tour final table, but it's a whole different story to become a champion. It is the battle of the aces once again, Corey, in a dominating position right now. Here's the flop. Oh, and it just comes up. up. Oh, my golly. The crowd roars. Jonathan Riddle shows no emotion whatsoever. And the look on Corey's face says it all, folks. I can't believe it. Now, it's far from over here. Corey can catch a seven to take the lead here. Here comes the turn card, Mike. Another deuce. Another deuce. That's going to do it. Oh. Jonathan oh. Little has done it. Oh. He has outdrawn Corey Carroll. And, Beth, what can you say? Tough luck for Corey Carroll down the stretch. Jonathan Little just destined to take the title, outdrawing Corey on the last two consecutive hands. Jonathan, smile, son, it's over. <laughs> You've won the 1.1 million. 
Take your million bucks home. Be happy. champion of the Mirage Poker Showdown, Jonathan Little. For Vince Van Patten, Layla Cayley, and everyone at the World Poker